Hello friends. We've got a couple interesting questions to give us some direction for today. First of all, what snake have you been chasing? And second, what decisions can you make to go forward with confidence, boldness, and enthusiasm? Well, welcome to another episode of the All Around Growth Podcast. Today is Wednesday, July 21st, 2021. This is episode number 155 of a show that provides insight and tools to build the life and homestead of your dreams. My name is Rob Kaiser and I am your host. And today we again are reading from The Rudder of the Day by Dan Miller, author of 48 Days to the Work and Life You Love. And a little snapshot on this book goes as follows. The first 60 minutes of each day will set the stage for what that day will hold. Be very careful about how you start your day. In those first few minutes, you are planting the seeds for your effectiveness, influence, health, and spiritual vitality for that day. If you get up late, grab a cup of coffee and a Twinkie, rush to work fighting the idiots in traffic, and drop down exhausted at your desk 10 minutes late, you have just set the tone for everything. And I can't really read the back cover of this book because it's so worn out. Anyways, the first 60 minutes of your day is something that I've heard referred to as the golden hour. I read this book with regularity and let's get right to it. Don't chase the snake. Don't waste your energy fretting about what has already happened. What are you doing tomorrow? When I was 10 years old, one of my best friends was Bob Queen. One afternoon, while exploring the back acreage of our neighboring farms, a snake bit Bob. Seeing the snake slither off, my immediate response was to run after the snake, track him down, and repay the scoundrel for what he had done to my friend Bob. However, Bob, being a much wiser hunter and outdoorsman, quickly pulled out his knife, lanced the bite, sucked the blood, and spit out the poison. The focus for him was on his own well-being, not on repaying the snake. Quote, Losers focus on what they are going through. Champions focus on what they are going to. Close quote. Dr. Mike Murdoch. How often I see people chasing the snake in their own lives. The company folds or you simply get laid off. The immediate reaction may include anger, resentment, bitterness, and backstabbing. These lead to discouragement, frustration, guilt, and depression. Be aware that all of these reactions and feelings focus on the past. Turning around and looking to the future opens up confidence, boldness, and enthusiasm. These often lead to an increased sense of accomplishment, personal control, fulfillment, and even money. Quote, Live out of your imagination not your history." Close quote. Stephen Covey. I once worked with a client who had been with her company for over 22 years. She was paid in excess of $300,000 annually and had a long list of accomplishments. However, with new management, they had demoted her, moved her from her corner office, and dramatically reduced her responsibilities. She had recently received a negative performance review it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that they were moving her out, and quickly. She was experiencing stomach pains, high blood pressure, and increased fatigue. Even though she had received several very attractive offers from sister companies, her first response was to defend her position, request meetings with the new CEO, and fut futilely attempt to regain what would never be the same again. My advice? Quit chasing the snake. Quote, Though no one can go back and make a brand new start, anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. Close quote. Carl Bard. 
If Bob and I had chased that snake, the poison would have been given opportunity to plunge through his veins, draining his energy and perhaps leading to his death. What are you doing in your life? Are you chasing a snake in the past or pursuing a dream in the future? Choose carefully. Your life may be at stake. And before we revisit those two questions that give us some direction for today, we will read a passage from the Bible. Obey me and I will be your God and you shall be my people. Only do as I say and all shall be well. But they wouldn't listen. They kept on doing whatever they wanted to, following their own stubborn, evil thoughts. They went backward instead of forward. Jeremiah chapter 7 verses 23 to 24. And the questions that we started with are as follows. What snake have you been chasing? And what decisions can you make to go forward with confidence, boldness, and enthusiasm? I felt somewhat challenged when, when I read this this morning. And I debated on not, not talking about this or skipping to another page of the book to reference or maybe even referencing one of the other daily devotionals that I read. But as I continued with my morning routine, kind of reflecting on this, this passage, I decided to roll with it, despite my reluctance. And the quotes that we read from Dr. Mike Murdoch, Stephen Covey, and Carl Bard are fantastic. And I thought about a lot of things, quite frankly, that I could expand upon. And I also thought about a lot of things that might be of value to you. And I realized that even though there may be some topics that are a little bit challenging for me to talk about or maybe aren't directly applicable in my life, it may be, there may be value to talking about that and sharing that because the reality is all of our lives and realities are different. We each, we each live in our own reality. And this is actually a good segue to something that I wanted to share, but I didn't really know how it would dovetail into the discussion of today about snake chasing, all right? And it's about the reality that we live in and how each of us kind of exists in our own little world. Now, I went to a Bible study last night at my church and uh, a woman spoke. The way that we do this Bible study is we follow a, a format in an older out of print book and it's good and it allows us for open dialogue about that which we are reading and we go through the study very slowly and it's, it allows for, for, well, like I said, nice dialogue. And one of the, uh, one of the women there made a comment about how she is reading a book by Don Miguel Ruiz called The Four Agreements, which I have read, but it, not in a very long time. And if you haven't read it, I would suggest doing so. 
and in her dialogue and comments about the four agreements, she mentioned, she brought it up because it was, it was relatable to some verses in the book of Ephesians that we were reading. And she made an analogy about that book and how we have to, if we actually want to be effective in this life and the manner in which we live, begin with loving ourselves. And that was a wonderful dialogue in conversation with the other people there. And hearing her talk about the four agreements and how it related to, basically just like everything relates to what is outlined in the Bible, it inspired me to share a couple of passages that stood out to me and the reasons why they stood out to me. And I wish that I could think of them and and, and reference them right off the top of my head. And if I have the wherewithal and I uh, and I'm able to, I will go back through my journal and reference those particular uh, verses that stood out to me. But in a nutshell, the one, the first verse was about love and kind of love of self and the idea that God is love. And second of all, the ver- the second verse that stood out to me was a it, it, it was a verse on the people in your life. And I shared that oftentimes I am surrounded by negativity, either negative people or it doesn't even matter what the specific uh, context of the negative environment I find myself in. What does matter is that I told people that I firmly believe that we are the, the sum total, if you will, of the five people that we spend the most time with. And there's a quote about that by Jim Rohn. I'm kind of paraphrasing his quote. But I also believe that the more time you spend around negative people, whether we deliberately try to do this or not, the negativity and the behaviors that of the people that we are around the most have a tendency to manifest in our own behaviors and we have a tendency to take that which we observe and oftentimes do not like and then project out the same thing on others and I'm sure you've heard somebody talking about the things that you see the criticisms of others are really just a reflection of the criticisms of yourself or something to that effect and I think there's also value in that statement as well and if you are surrounded by negativity or you have some in your life and you feel as though you are dwelling on that more often than you should my suggestion is to Go out of your way and find positive people to be around. And that might include doing things that extend beyond your comfort zone, like trying to find a church home, getting involved with your community through volunteer organizations, both. There's so many 
positive aspects about my involvement in the church over the past few years and learning about its involvement in the community that I can't highly recommend it enough. And you don't have to be a Bible-thumping spiritual person to engage in this behavior and promote the benefits of attending a church. That's another subject for another time, but making a concerted effort to spend time with positive people, people who lift you up, is important if you want to move beyond the negativity in your life. It's important because it's very easy for us to fall into these habits and patterns and by making that concerted effort to go out of our way to spend time with people we admire, people that are positive, people that we want to become more like for whatever reason, then we are t actively taking steps to actively reprogram and repattern our minds and our lives. And to kind of summarize, what snake have I been chasing? Well, there, there, there are some negative components and aspects of my life that have been that way for quite some time. Years, perhaps. And I have continued to encourage or try to create an environment which would facilitate positive change and recently I've discovered that I can make decisions to go forward with confidence boldness and enthusiasm and which is the second question what decisions can you make to go forward with confidence boldness and enthusiasm well Dan wrote about how often he sees people chasing the snake in, a, in their own lives and how oftentimes we react with anger, resentment, bitterness, backstabbing. Maybe it happens in your life too. The bitter resentment, the talking behind people's backs, just the overall creation of an environment of toxicity. You know what I'm talking about. But it doesn't need to be that way. It doesn't need to be that way at all. So, in closing, are you chasing a snake in the past or pursuing a dream in the future? Choose carefully. Your life may be at stake. Now again, much of the content that I spoke about today was pulled from a book called The Rudder of the Day, Stories and Wisdom to Kickstart Your Workday, written by Dan Miller, author of 48 Days to the Work You Love. I will link to it in the show notes. I wish I could take credit for it, but I cannot. Most of what I talk about on this show is inspired by, motivated by, and sourced from other people. I do not have a whole lot of original content, but I'm simply sharing what was so freely shared with me, and I hope that it's of value to you because, well, what we're all trying to do is build the life and homestead of our dreams, and by creating the community that maybe we don't have in our own lives, with each other is part of the way that we can obtain the things that we uh, that we lack and part of the way that you can grow and participate in this community is going to t.me slash all around growth that's a group that's growing on telegram and we would definitely encourage you to join us there more of the conversation 
that takes place here takes place there. And if you like what you hear and you are interested in supporting the show, there are a couple things that you can do. First of all, share it with someone else. Share it with a friend, a loved one, family member. If you think it might benefit them in some way, shape, or form, send it their way. If you don't want to send it direct, share it on social media. There's also a few links in the show notes that you can click to rate and review the podcast if you're an Apple podcast listener or use iTunes. If you're not, just give the podcast a rating on your podcast player of choice. And like I said, share it. That's the greatest thing that, that, that you can do to help this show out because I'm a terrible self-promoter. I just enjoy doing this. And I'm also very interested to see what happens in terms of organic growth. So that's about it. There's also links for show notes or links for all episodes in the show notes. And that's it for today. I appreciate your time, everyone. Thank you very much. And have a great day and a great rest of the week. This is Rob Kaiser. And thank you.